Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I want to talk with you about dialing in your water changes. Should your water changes be 10%, 20%, 80%, 90%? How much? How do you dial them in? Let's talk about it now. As I've said in several of my videos, and as is written on the back of some of the t-shirts and hoodies that I sell at my spring store, the uh, keeping a fish is a fluid, it's a fluid situation. And there are a lot of moving parts that have to be considered when you're trying to do something like, like a water change. Now, certainly one of the ways that people gauge it is by measuring nitrates. And, uh, but there's other factors to consider like with certain fish, a very large percentage water change can be a bit of a shock, especially if you have a, a big difference between your tank pH and your tap pH. So also to consider are some fish are much more sensitive, like let's say discus. With discus, you might be better off with more frequent small water changes as opposed to doing a very large water change. As opposed to these, these fish here, uh, African cichlids, these fish are pretty hardy and usually uh, respond very well to large water changes. That being said, this tank gets a water change to about right here, oh, about 25% or so, is about the water change this tank gets. And with its filtration, uh, I run nitrates at about 20, around 20 or so. So it's not really an issue. Nitrates are not an issue in this tank. And my water changes are more to uh, remove hormones, furanomes, right? The, uh, and also to remineralize the water and to freshen things up, right? So when I say it's a fluid situation, I'm talking about over time, let's say that your fish put on size and require more food. Or let's say that you add several fish, let's say you add between five and ten new fish to an aquarium, you might want to consider increasing the percentage of the water change. Either more frequent water changes or a higher percentage of water to swap out. So you have to consider bio load and you consider how much you're feeding. Let's say you've suddenly decided to go from feeding twice a day for whatever reason to once a day. And what is it that you're feeding? Is it super protein rich? Are you feeding vegetables? Are you feeding, I mean, there's a variety of factors here to consider. But certainly as you add stock, if you feed more heavily, things of this nature, let's say you add more filtration, you might be able to get away with less water changes. But let's say that uh, your fish have grown, you've added more stock, you're now feeding twice a day instead of once a day, your filtration has remained constant, you're probably going to need to do more water changes, either more frequent water changes or a higher percentage. Instead of your normal 10, 20%, you might have to go to 50 or 60%. So again, you have to be sort of thinking on your feet with regards to water changes because there's no law that is written in stone. And for many of you, it's, it's a matter of what's been working. However, what's been working might not keep working if you have a big change in the parts, right? The moving parts, the fluid situation that exists either with a change of food, maybe you go to a much more protein rich food, right? Or maybe you um, start feeding a lot more live food, right? Krill, worms, whatever. Uh, these things are kind of going to produce a lot of waste a lot of ammonia and things like that. So water changes might be uh, needed more frequently. All right, so again, think on your feet with regards to it. If your fish have put on size, you're feeding them more frequently, you're feeding them more protein-rich food. Uh, maybe you've uh, taken a hang-on back filter out of commission and are just running with two other filters that you had and removed a third of the filtration. Again, these are all moving parts. It truly is a fluid situation gauge your water changes uh, you know, with some thinking involved 
not just automatic. Well, every Wednesday I do a 50% water change and uh, you might not need to do that much or you might need to do more. Just think in terms of where your tank was a year ago and where is it now. This tank uh, four or five months ago probably had a third less fish. It, it's been consistent with the filtration, but the filtration over time has become a bit, uh, a bit gunked up, right, naturally. And so its flow rates have probably slowed down a little bit. And, uh, you know, these are all things to consider. So this tank has gone from maybe a 10, 20 percent to 30, 40 percent water change. And, uh, and between now and the time when I actually service the sump and the canister, I'll probably work that water change down to 50 percent, uh, maybe even 55, 60 percent, uh, only because the filtration is going to lose some of its turnover until I actually service it. After I service it, the flow is going like crazy and uh, you know, I might be able to go back up to 20, 30 percent. So at any rate, think in terms of uh, the moving parts and uh, don't fall into a pattern that remains the same when the circumstances in your tank have changed. Because uh, what worked with five fish in this tank might not work with, you know, the number of fish I have in here now. I'm not even sure what, 20? I'm not sure how many fish I have in here and what I'm feeding them, right? So um, that's my tip. It's a fluid situation. Think with it and uh, you'll get a better result with your water changes. Don't fall into a rock solid concrete, never to change now and forever uh, pattern because, um, you know, you have to be kind of alert and, and flexible a bit. And uh, again, everything I say is anecdotal and works for me. What works for you works for you. You make up your own decision on these things naturally, but that's just my, my uh, observation. And, uh, and as always, I think the fish agree. Do you agree? My Color 500 says yes, so there you have it. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And if you like the content of the channel, consider becoming a Patreon member, a member of the Garage Gang, and uh, information on that is in the description below the video. Okay, I hope to see you on Saturday, and bye-bye uh, for now.